With the domination of fast food restaurants on every corner and tantalizing ads for junk food on TV sets, the healthy eating that many Americans knew in yesteryear has faded. And with work, school, and other activities that keep parents occupied throughout the day, there seems to be little to no time to make a decent home-cooked meal. It's no secret, more people are overweight today than ever before, and many experts are calling national attention to the obesity epidemic. Well, it's become a quote-unquote, you know, epidemic because of situational things that have taken place not only in the workplace but also in the schools. For example, um, programs that were cut out are now being reinstituted, for example, physical education. And the youth today tend to be more, you know, technology driven. So they're, you know, doing computer things. In my day, we were out running on the streets and, you know, doing activities that m children would normally do. But because of technology, that kind of has allowed our youth to be more inactive than they were in the past. According to the National Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion, childhood obesity has more than tripled in the past 30 years, creating a new generation of obese adolescents. Well, childhood obesity, actually the word uh, overweight is often used to describe uh, a child that weight is in excess of what we would call a normal or standard weight for, for a child. And we use body mass index as an indicator of what one would consider a normal weight uh, for a child or anyone. And up until a certain age, when we start using the word, we start using the word obesity and stop using the word overweight for children. So in a body mass index that uh, exceeds um, a certain range for a child is considered uh, overweight. And for an adult, uh, we call it obesity beyond a certain range. And so that's, uh, so anything there's an idea of body weight, and then beyond that, so many percentage points is considered an obese child, an overweight child. Obesity is a medical health condition that is characterized by excessive body fat and can have a negative effect on an individual's health. Very readily associated with obesity would be diabetes. Diabetes then associated with hardening of the arteries, and then hardening of the arteries associated with cardiovascular diseases. And when you put that big umbrella, cardiovascular diseases, you bring in hypertension, of course, renal disease, stroke, and heart attack. And so if you really sort of very back into it very uh, simply, overweight, the most common first parameter is going to be diabetes. Overweight also leads to hypertension and a bunch of other things, but the very top of the list has to be diabetes and its complications. And if we think of diabetes as being a cardiovascular disease, and it is, it's a vascular disease first, diabetes is, and then it affects the cardiac, the heart side. Now you've got cardiovascular disease, hypertension, stroke, renal failure, and heart failure. And that, those are the main ones. Now the list goes on and on and on. Uh, we are now understanding that Alzheimer's disease, um, some the uh, developmental, uh, mental, developmental issues. And emotionally. The general school of thought would say that being overweight negatively impacts the child's self-esteem. And there's probably some, some, uh, some evidence to support that. But fortunately, that's not for every, every obese child because some people are very well adjusted and they're overweight. However, food doesn't seem to be the only contributing factor of obesity in both adults and children. Inactivity is also a culprit. So, for example, anybody who lives in a community where there are no sidewalks or there is no access to parks or any recreational areas where they can go out and, for example, walk you know, a mile around the block or whatever is less inducive to being able to have physical activity and inactivity contributes to obesity. Childhood obesity also disproportionately affects certain minority youth populations. The National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey found that African American and Mexican American youth ages 12 to 19 were more likely to be overweight than non-Hispanic white youth. If you get into the Asian American, uh, Native American, African American, Hispanic American, take out Asian American, African American, Hispanic American, and Lat um, 
uh, and Native American, it's going to be 30, almost 40 percent of the children are going to be overweight or obese. And so is it because of lack of activity alone? That has something to do with it, but not necessarily all of it. Gastroenterologist and founder of Project Health, Dr. Joseph Webster, says he's found a solution to the problem. He's proposed a new initiative to get kids moving and battle childhood obesity. The project that we had for the school children was a behavior, mind-altering, altering, thinking skill, very simple concepts about controlling your habits. Very simple. You should not have to be a dietitian to know how to lose weight. You should not need to know how many calories in a slice of cake to know that you shouldn't have that many slices of cake. And so I think when we make it too complicated and we start putting all of the uh, physiology into the equation, it make, people cannot follow it. It's too complicated. Uh, the Atkins diet and all of these diets, you have to read to follow those diets. People that can't read are doomed to failure. I have the very simple cut your food in half formula. Whatever is on your plate, take your knife, divide it in half, and you'll get half the calories on that plate. That's very simple. That's mathematical. It's impossible to eat half the food on the plate and get all the calories. It's impossible. Project Health hopes to get parents more informed about nutrition and exercise and help encourage kids to adapt good health by making smarter food choices. It was designed for a parental piece. There was always some people, you know, what, can, what are you going to do about the parents? Well, if you think about that question, what can we do about the parents? It's hard to get parents to go to PTO meeting. And so to ask a parent to come out after school or on a Saturday to talk to us about their child's weight was very difficult. And we set up a couple of meetings, parents would not come. And so it's a very, very daunting child, I mean, uh, task a very to try to do because you're trying to change the comfort zone. They are comfortable where they are. Yeah. It's very hard to do. So the program is, is still in a dormant stage right now. Um, we think it has a lot of potential, but it's going to take uh, some uh, financing and funding to get it rolling. Although the plan seems uh, very ambitious to some, many so hope the new initiative will bring about change. And, and people, you know, we have responsibility too. We have to start redirecting our mind as to what, you know, being overweight is and, uh, and the ramifications.